couple's first and foremost responsibility with their children is to raise their children so that they will be of the mind to produce children who will be on the front line. Our whole goal in raising our daughter was to raise someone who was going to fit with someone else on the front line. That was the whole priority. Because we know this is going to take generation after generation after generation. And if it's not continued as an intergenerational process, then we've lost. So we talk about our children of the future. We're seeing our great, 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 great grandchildren, blah, blah, blah. Well, then that could just be a bunch of slaves. Unless we rear our children to be on the front line. Okay. And I keep saying our children because we're African people and the children are our priority. We come together to procreate. The universe is about procreation and that's what we model ourselves after. The universe is about procreation. The universe is already always producing. Always changing, always about the business of bringing male, female energy together to produce something bigger and better. So the universe is about. Somebody show me scientifically where that's not the case. If this change does not continue to occur, occur the universe would die. I can't. The universe is going to die, right? But if this did not continue, it would. Everything in the universe that is alive, that lives, is about the business of procreation about the business of producing, about the business of reproducing, about the business of change. And we, as a people, studied the universe for the model of humanity. We didn't just come up and, and be about the business of whatever insane stuff and say, well, we're going to change the universe to reflect us. We understood that that was greater. We did the um, uh, deductive reasoning. African people are deductive people. We look at the greater, we look at the whole, we look at the macro, we look at the massive amount. And from that, we determine what we're supposed to be about. Because we know that that's smarter than us. It's been an operation infinitely longer than us. Versus other people who want to look at the universe as a microcosm of them and change the universe to fit them, to fit their logic. That's not us. We look to the universe, and the universe we discovered is about procreation. It's about continuity. It's not about death. Death happens, but death can feed life. But that's not the heart of what we're about. Death is just an aside that comes along with it or transition is an aside that comes along with it. That's not the heart of how we think. That's not, that's not, the, that's not so. Okay. So, we have to define, and I wish that we just, if we could take nothing else from that, we have to understand that complementarity can only exist Warriors in a social context. Period. Can only exist in a social context. In a social context that is political. I shouldn't say politicized because a social context is automatically political, but we'll put this up. Here. Politicized social context. <coughs> There's no such thing as a people. There's no such thing as a word that you say that's not political. There's no such thing as an act that you do that's not political. You are socialized within a particular political context. And all of the definitions and all of the words and all of the gestures, all of the ideas, all of the ideals, all of those are political. And they follow the interest and the agenda of the mind that controls that reality. The mind that formed that reality, the mind that created that reality, this is not a reality that we created. So the policies of this reality do not reflect our interest. They reflect the opposite of our interest. So we have to understand that politics are everywhere. Politics is everything. I was going to grasp where they say, well, culture is everywhere, culture is everything, because they wanted to move you away from the fact that there's the politics behind that culture. <laughs> 
before you said they want to move us away from um, culture was introduced to move us away from the social. The, the idea, theoretically, the way people will present things. So I, I was a sociologist. Not a sociologist. The, the, in the classes, you were told that culture is everything. You weren't told that politics was behind the culture that's everything. And of course, within the Western context, who, where you can only analyze things at certain levels. So you analyze things uh, at the level of individuals, at the level of groups, at the level of societies. There's nothing within Western social science that has anything to do with spirit. For us, you can't have science without spirit. Yeah, that's, that's part and part of it. That's the heart of it. That's the root of it. That's the foundation. Okay. So that's one of the main reasons, because this is, this, this right here, this is a, a, a spiritual act. Can you imagine the people who would pray before sex? We can't imagine that because of the politics of our socialization. It doesn't make sense. That's like depriving yourself. I mean, you know, why, why would you do that? To, to not have sex for years. Because we've been socialized to be so weak in terms of our physical that that would make for you, what are you going into a nunnery or something? What's wrong with you? That would be the logic. That would be the logic. And even there, when you, when you look at, and I don't want to get into some traditional European society, but when you talk about nunneries and when you talk about the uh, the monasteries, there were underground connections. So yeah, sex was going on. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Very good. There's a piece of a discussion in, in um, Terrence McLaughlin's Dirt, but that's not like the only only source. That's a very, very, and I don't recommend books by Europeans, but this is a book that, that you really should have in your library. It's outlawed in this country for a number of years. Terrence, I think this is an A. Laughlin. And the name of the book is Dirt. It's, it's, it is that and um, Jane Yolen's Encounter, two books that we need to have in our library that are by them, among others, but these are important ones. These, these are, are ones, this one in particular will make you want to puke multiple times. This is them writing about them. It's not. It's not. It's not Baruti coming in and, and <laughs> manufacturing stuff. No, it's them writing about them. No, I have a question. Uh, if you go back just a, a little bit, sure. when we're talking about culture, and um, you, you kind of like threw me for a loop there, because my understanding of, of politics was that culture was the mother that gave birth to your politics and economics. And so, I mean, that that was my understanding. And so, what I just heard it was kind of like. Within sociology, oh, we are in complete agreement in terms of how it's presented. Within, <coughs> within the social sciences, you have five, six basic institutions. <coughs> Education, family, religion, politics, um, military, and um, no. no, that's Chris Wilson. But there, there are five major family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. those, are, those are the major institutions in any successful society. And the argument is that they come out of culture, but it's sort of like a chicken before the egg argument because culture is the creation of a people who come together and they do things and they develop rituals and, and over time and they develop a, a, an identity, a sense of who they are, right? All right? But this is based upon the interests of these people and those interests are politics. Okay. 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 Those interests are political. Politics is an organization of people around their interests. Okay, just like Amos Wilson when he talked about um, uh, money, currency, and he said that currency exists before whatever it is that's exchanged, it exists before the, the, the money, because the currency, economics is the set of relationships that exist between the people who determine, that determines what they're going to do with that money, how they're going to create the things, how they're going to spend it, who's going to get what. Those are relationships. Exist. Those relationships are political. So, I mean, I could argue that culture came first, but it's sort of like the chicken egg. But we need to think about the politics behind the culture 
we understand the policies behind the culture, no matter where we see them organized, we understand what they're about. Okay? And then what the West does also, it takes these concepts and it feeds them to people. So we bought into this, this culture thing, and there is culture is extremely important. Okay? But what they have done with that, they're now saying that everything is a culture. So you've got hip hop culture, you've all got right. youth culture, you've got elderly, you've got this kind. So all of these cultures, which takes away from the fact that African people have one culture, is very divisive. It breaks everything up. So now we're thinking of culture with the wrong definition. Most of them can't even define what culture is. Okay? But we're, we're, we, we've taken our de the definition that we have of culture has been. been Fragment is really is useless, just like ethnic group. The, the concept is, is useless. It's used politically by them to divide us. So now we think that there are hundreds of cultures among African people. No, there are hundreds of ethnic groups among, among African people. Okay, so that that is, is how we're defining things that, that are flawed. Um, someone else could argue logically that culture isn't the base, and I don't have a problem, but to, to me, I'm going to emphasize what I think is going to help people to think better about whatever it is. Um, politics, the politics of relationships within the West are primarily materialistic and utilitarian. Mm -hmm. You're looking for what you're going to benefit from this versus what you can... It's, it's sort of like the same thing as, as a warrior in the West versus a warrior in, in our tradition. In the West, the, the, the primary purpose was to, to kill, to, to use, to, 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 to abuse, to, to what have you. In Africa, the, the definition of a warrior is based on service. You, the, these people who you can hurt because you are a warrior, your job is to serve them to make sure that whatever their needs are are served. That's our tradition. So these are two political definitions. One's a definition based upon a family-centered people, a people who are communal, who had to have developed a certain type set of relationships in order to become communal in the first place. Had to develop a certain type of definition of the kind of character that these people would have, which is political. Versus another people who develop out of an individualistic survival of the fittest mentality. And their complementary, their, their man, male, female relationships are very different. So for them, when I talk about them, I do like that. This to me is divisive. Okay, that's how I teach it. Someone else can interpret it whatever they, where they want to. But this is how I teach it. I don't use this dash between male and female. I just use this line. I guess for me because it's softer, it doesn't set up as a divide, separating these things. You know, and there are gray areas in there. Uh -huh. But all of this, our relationships, all of this. So not only do we have to understand complementarity within the context of the political culture of that people, we have to understand that within context. If we understand the politics, the culture of African people in terms of the type of societies that we produce, the type of families that we produce, the type of, of um, power that women had within our societies, then we'll understand what's wrong now and what we have to get back to in order to correct this. You can't, you, you can't work within an alien culture to create something that's African. Especially in a predatory alien culture that sees anything that is different from it as needing to be destroyed because it will reveal it for what it is. So if we don't understand who we are and what we're about as a political, as a culture, as a social, entity that has spanned thousands and thousands and thousands of years with traditions that make sense for us, then, then we're wasting our time. Because pretty soon there won't be anything African there. And we're not talking about dress, and we're not talking about hairstyle, and we're not talking about uh, what's on your walls. We're talking about what's in here and what's in here. That's what we're talking about here.